Hello and welcome to another gear talk with the clown. Okay. Okay. I just need to move that a little bit. Looks like there's five people watching. So hello, the five people that are watching. If you're there, let me know if you can hear my voice and stuff like that. Basically, I am going to talk about my setup again this evening. So I acquired a TR8 the other day, and this is the TR8. Not really delved under the hood of the TR8 that much at the moment. Uh, uh, yeah, lovely little drum machine. Um, uh, sad thing is about it, I don't think I'll be using the kicks on it. Uh, I could separate it out and then put a load of distortion pedals or units after it to make the kick really, really large. Um, but I don't know whether I can be asked to do that. And here is why. This is the TR8's kick. This is the Electro's kick. So yeah. <laughs> That, that is why I may not be using the TR8's kick and will just be using the Tribes. Um, yeah, and the other thing I was going to talk about is hum. But, uh, uh, yeah, the, Vol the Volker usually hums. But today... Yeah, so I was going to say that the Volca was really, really hummy in my setup and I might take it out because of that purpose. And then she stopped doing it as I turned her on today. So, uh, yeah, the only hum that I've got at the moment is coming from the third uh, EMX, uh, MX1. Um, and, uh, and I can't do anything about it. I have, I have no idea why it's doing it at all whatsoever. Um, I think I narrowed it down to possibly the TV. Let me just have a look. No. Yeah, no, there's a there's a tiny little wee hum underneath everything there. Oh, we've got a few people to join the party. John Clark's here, James Fan Fantana is here. Ghost in the machine. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like hardware is a real pain in the bum. Um, some days it'll do things that you want and some days it will not do things that you want and it's a real nightmare. And like t yeah, like today I was gonna say, you know, the Volker hums. There's no hum. The only hum is literally it's coming from coming from the third one over there. Uh, but it's tiny and it's, and it's under things. So yeah, I was going to talk about why I've got three uh, MX ones, and for me it just it just it just made sense, like 100%. So at the moment I've got this one, which is like the master uh, MX one, and it's got the kicks and the hats from the uh, uh, Electribe, uh, then the Volker sample going in there. Uh, here. Uh, the the sampler itself and then this MX1 is here on this fader and then this MX1 over here is on this fader that's where my voice is too and then the TR8 is in in uh, USB 4 I'm a little disappointed that the TR8 did not go over uh, the USB powered port in port 3 uh, that was my intention for this but it just means that I can then get another another piece of equipment that is uh, USB powered. Great. So yeah, that one is the master one and mainly does the drums. And let's just listen to the drums. Which 
which is great for, for rolls and bits and pieces like that. There are fills and stuff on there as well, which I haven't really gotten to yet. I've only had it a couple of days, and I've literally just, just hooked it up and, uh, and made sure that it worked with everything. Like I say, it doesn't go over the, the, the powered port in, in USB 3, but other than that, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, yeah. As you can see, she really, she's really going to bring some new elements of live. Hello, Amy Buffum, you just joined the party. Uh, Dirk's joined the party, and so has Jim Prendergast. How is it going, people? This is Klein Splainin 101. You've not missed much. All you've missed is the Volker failure to be noisy, which is great. So yeah, that's the TRA and the and the e EMX, and I've also got the Volker sample running here as well. So this is. There we go, <laughs> had a set all wrong. So now I've got three times the drum machines and they're all, they can all play independent stuff and it's more rhythms and stuff that's gonna keep things rolling along. along. And this is what they sound like all together. See the kick, the kick's nice, but then like, let's, let's chuck in the tribe kick. Let's add some hats. I, I really think that the, the TR8 is going to be a lovely addition to my setup and it's going to bring loads of, of, of new, new, new ways in which I can make my patches exciting for you guys to hear. Because uh, uh, I've been listening to my sets recently and it's like maybe I need a little bit more uh, um, melody in my sets. You know, I've got enough pound, to, you know, but anyway. <laughs> yes, Mimi, Clang playing with his knobs. Right then, uh, where were we? So yeah, that's that. That's the main mixer. That's what that mixer is doing. It's doing all the drums, pretty much. Oh, hold on.
Now, you will notice that the 303, which is that box over there, is making a noise and the noise is moving, and I'm controlling that over here. I can also record that in. Over here. Now, that's the whole point of having a brain, uh, so that it sends signals. There you go. There you go. So, you know, when, when I'm out live, I can then write that in live, you know? Anyway, so yeah, the 303 over here is then split into a couple of channels. The channel, uh, channel, the first channel is going into is a distortion over here, which is also being clocked by the Korg Volker sample, and that sounds like this. You can hear the pulse that the Volker sample is sending out. And a third channel, which I completely forgot to turn on, which is a delay channel going through a... What the hell's that? It's a micro... Uh, a mini chaos pad. So that's, ju that's just the delay. So that's one 303 split three ways. I've also got the TB3 going into that one and the Zox box. Uh, the TB3 is also split into a, a echo pedal, which isn't plugged in at the moment because I don't have a, a plug for it. Uh, so yeah, but that's in here. And what else we've got? We've also got the SCAT bass synth. Let's, let's just give you a taster of the TB3. And, they, then, and then it would have an echo on it as well. But at the moment, there is no echo on that. Although there is some sort of echo on through the, I think so. Anyway, there would be, uh, like I say, another another slot for it there, but I can't play that because it's not, not that. Anyway. And then the Zox box. Having some problems with levels on this one at the moment. It needs a service. And then, yeah, she would be going into the chaos pad next to her, and that would have a filter on there, almost like a distortion uh, uh, for for that. But I'm going in through the microphone input so that you guys can hear me at the moment. So yeah, that's that's that one. To, oh, the SCAT bass synth. The SCAT bass synth. I don't know if you can see it on camera there. Is, uh, is is next to the Zox box and it is driven CV and gate and sounds a little like this. Just, whoop, excuse me, just solid bass. And she's being driven by the 303, so this is what she sounds like. Just hor horrendously good bass, you know? <laughs> uh, I took her out. I've taken her out three times in the past couple of weeks, and the second time I took her out, Jesus Christ, she knocked down fucking doors. I don't know whether it was the system being kind to me or the, the patches I was playing that night, but honestly, she just fucking rocked. And 
sometimes I have her running with a bit of a side chain against the kick. All I can say for my system at the moment is it is sounding crisp as fuck. The, the, the electride kicks are a little bit much. Yeah. So, because that's, <laughs> that's nice and accessible. That's something that the clown isn't a lot of the time is nice and accessible. Sometimes it's a little bit too harsh, you know, but that sounds really, really good. So my kicks are a bit much. So I need to rework some things. Uh, anyway. So that is that is that one. That's that uh, uh, MX1. And then the third and final one, uh, which I got off of Stuart Smith the other week. Now I can, I can have the synth engine from the EMX out into this. Unfortunately, the synth engine from the EMX is not is not the best thing in the world. So I've got a stroppy cat. She keeps she keeps bringing me her toy. I don't know if you can see her toy. There it is. And she's just not left me alone. She's scratched me all night, and all she wants is is a, a little play. So anyway, <laughs> let's just play you the EMX. Like, not the greatest sounding synth engine in the world, but then I've not played with it long enough to be able to get a patch that is of any good to see you. Hey Zoe, hey Tom, hey David, how's it going? <laughs> that kick not much. Yeah, you know, it's. It, <laughs> I think I need to tone my kicks down a little bit, Nick, and, and you know, make a halfway point between the Electrodes kicks and the TR8s kick and, like, marry them together. I've got a lot of work ahead of me. I've got two festivals coming up. Um, let me just shut that off. Anyway, that's the... Oh, no, no, wait, sorry. What, yeah, yeah. I've got two festivals coming up and, uh, and I've got to work everything because I've, you know, I've, I've, I've pulled the system apart so much um, that, but yeah. Anyway, let me, let me just... But it will back up. So that was the System 1M that I've just, I've just, there, there's the, uh, yeah. System 1, that's what the EMX sounds like. It, it sounds, the, the EMX sounds really thin to me, but if you just layer it on doing something else, you know, I'm sure I could get a better sound out of that if I worked it for, for like half an hour or something. So yeah, that's the first input on the on the on on the third MX. Oh, it's still on something. Uh, so next up is the rocket. The rocket sounds a little like this. There she is. I've literally only just put this together, so levels should be all over the place because I you know I need to get in there and really really work it. So yeah, that's the that's the rocket. Next up we got the the one that's not working again. You did this last night. Why did you do this? Oh, I've... There we go. So that's the SH-32 uh, going in over the third MX-1. And then we have the System 1M. And then the effects for the System 1M. And then I will have the JX03 in here. I just don't have enough Jasper's arms at the moment for it. So why did I buy, or why did I acquire another MX-1? Simply that I could have the drums all dedicated on one box, which means I don't have to fanny around worrying about which 
uh, effects that it's got on it. It's dedicated to the drums. So any effect that I put on that is going to be dedicated for, for the drums. And, it, you know, some of these effects are global, so it, uh, uh, you have to think about what you're doing. But now I can just relax and just fucking push buttons on it, and it will do exactly what I need it to do with the drums once I've set it up right. And again, for the synths, the same thing. I can now uh, uh, also want to get the aux run in so that I can have maybe a chaos pad and a pedal on it. And then each of those chaos pads and pedals tailored to whatever is going on with the synths. You know, uh, I want the, the digital delay from SCAT for the, the drum synth, uh, for the drum MX, so that I can get those lovely rolling bass drums and, and stuff. Does the MX one only do FX sequences on melodies or sequences too? Uh, well, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> that's that's the effects. So you have to like set it per channel. For the B BFX, you can set it differently for per channel, but for the uh, uh, master effects, it's like global, so they'll all they'll all do it. This one's set up for side chain. Uh, that's a scatter function. You can also set up a combi function, so it makes its own rhythms as it goes, which is great when you when you're in, uh, uh, right on the fly. That's it with ice, and that's great for a little while. David Johnson, I hope this, 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 this. Uh, no, the uh, MX1 does, doesn't send notes, I don't believe, no. So yeah. And now I can totally, you, you've got like, twenty uh, uh, combi effects going on behind there, so I can now set them all up and each one will be tailored to what the, the synths rather than what would be tailored over here for the drums. So it means I can now have different effects on fucking everything. Well, I think for the for the system one F for the effects I've got a Oh, it's a side chain again. No, no, I haven't set this one up. Usually it's a slicer. And then you have to turn things up a little bit. So yeah, if I've missed any questions, I'm really sorry. If you want to ask them again, then please feel free. If there's anyone who believes that there was a question I missed that I should answer, please, please go ahead. Oh, I've done it again. So yeah, that is the reason why I bought three, three, uh, three MX1s. Well, let's just put the, the 303 in there a bit for a, for a little bit more. So yeah, that's what that's why I bought them simply because I could I could tailor everything now uh, and each. Uh, whereas before I was finding that, that the effects weren't applicable for like the synths if they were applicable for the drums. So now I can have all those uh, you know effects tailored to the drums or tailored to the synths uh, uh, or uh, or tailored to, to the 303s. On the 303, I'm hoping uh, everybody keeps fucking saying, ah, sell me your chaos pads. No, I'm not selling you my chaos pads, Jesus Christ. For the, uh, for the 303s, for the orcs, I'm gonna have, I don't know if you can see that, if I'm even holding it right, uh, a, a chaos pad and a slicer pedal. Now, I know that works absolutely beautiful on the, um, uh, on the 303s. It slices it up nicely, and with the, the, uh, the MX ones, you can uh, select how much of the effect goes through to, to the, whichever one you've got on there. 
So and then you've got to send and return, so you can turn it on and off. So which is great. And then on the other one, I'll possibly I will have another chaos pad on this one for the synths and a rotary. It's got a lovely distortion on it and sends things a bit wobbly. And if you send two or three instruments through it, they kind of all share it and it kind of glues them together a little bit. And you know, and th th you know, this is just this is just my. Uh, um, observations over what I've done over the past couple of years uh, and yeah so that's that's why I've got I've got those are you using all channels on your MX's now no not quite hold on gems I'll get to your question in a minute at the moment I have one audio one analog two analogs two analog inputs three and one two three USBs three and all of the digital ports three. I'm not gonna worry about di the digital ports at the moment, simply because I've got enough going on as it is. I've got enough for, for room for another drum machine, another synth, and then a couple of the, the, the EFX things from Roland here. I need a couple of those to, to get extra channels into things. Uh, 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 and so yeah, there was that one. So no, I'm not using them all yet. Are your MX chained to each other? How are they connected? The yes, indeed, the eight MXs are all chained together. This is the master one. They, like, errors say they're, they're MIDI linked. Uh, I say uh, they're, they're USB linked through, through their USB. I say back everything up with fucking MIDI. So at the moment, um, uh, they've all got, the EMX is the master. It goes to the through eight and then into these. However, these are linked through USB through the PC ports on both of these into the channels here. So USB one and two, are, that's one, and that's USB two. There we go. What's your opinion on the distortion in the TBO three? My opinion on the distortion on the TBO three is the whole thing's a bit weak, which is why I've, I've, I've split it into like three or four channels. No, I didn't think you would. Uh, which is why I've split it into three channels. She's got a distortion provided by the Torcido EFX and a delay provided by the <laughs> Mini Chaos Pad. Um, yeah, I mean, it's an, it's an okay box, but you need to split it to make it sound like that original 303, and you're still not going to get close, you know? Okay. Catch you later, Mimi. It was a pleasure to be chatting nonsense to you. Uh, as you use uh, the BAM instant analog input instead of a digital, yeah, absolutely. But the the problem with that is I had the Behringer V base and I was using that for the digital inputs on on one when I had one, and it, it didn't like Ableton. Um, apparently, it's, it's an in and out, and I tried to just make it an out rather than an in as well, uh, and it and it just it didn't like it at all and it failed me three times uh, whilst I was at gigs. So at the moment, I am leaving that out, the digital inputs. I'm sure in time I will, because then I can have three more synths or whatever going on into it. Wait, wait, wait. So you enter the master of MXBA and it seems in. Uh, not quite, okay, so, so I've got uh, master one and two. So uh, they, they've all got MIDI. Uh, they all got, mid, got MIDI coming out of the, the, the thing. Uh, one goes into master and two goes into master. Uh, and then the audio comes out of, the, of this one and into my three chaos pads, hence where I get the, 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 that from it. <clears throat> I hope that has answered that question. Evening, Warren. It's a pleasure to see you, my man. How is it going? Mm -mm. Can you track all threes on a PC? Well, I had this very good, Jim Scavenger came over uh, earlier tonight and we had this very same discussion. Would I need three PCs all running Ableton to be able to track three different ones? Is, is that where it's going? And the problem with that is I'm using the, the PC out to, to chain them up. So it's a very good question, Warren. I'm, I'm hoping somewhere in forums and stuff I can find out the answer. Uh, brilliant, Daniel, you understand. Warren dancing, not bad, bruv. Good, good, man, good, good. Well, I think that's it. Like, you know, um, uh, I've got a lot of reworking to do. Um, I think my kicks are a little bit harsh. Uh, yeah, and, you know, buying, buying another piece of kit, especially two pieces of kit, which means I've got to learn this one inside and out and then make settings. I mean, this one's half done because it was mainly for the drums when I had it before. But like these two, I've got to, you know, 
completely rework them and make them, you know, for the you know the purpose that I want them for, you know, which is you know dedicated. Uh, yeah, it's also nice to have things mutable for the whole thing as well as being able to. On the on the downside, I need like another pair of hands. <laughs> Mark Anthony, yeah, you're definitely late. Should be able to use all three at the same time. That's what I thought, Warren. Um, over 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 USB, uh, surely they should pick the Ableton should pick them both, but all three up. I don't know. Uh, uh, if you change the MIDI channel may, on there, maybe different channels you could track that way. I haven't even looked. You know, I haven't even looked at what MIDI channels they're transmitting or anything on. I just kind of plugged them in and off they went and. And there they go. I'm, I'm kind of lazy. If, if I plug it in and it works, then I'll, I'll stick with that and I'll wait until someone comes along and shows me a better way of doing things. So I'm playing with my, uh, my, my irritated pussy. <laughs> Next question. Yes, uh, PCs do recognize more than one interface, but will they recognize three MX1s? I guess if I called them something different, they probably would. I got... I got two here. Didn't try actually. Well, uh, if you do try it, please let me know how that works out because that would that would be an an end to my tracking problems. It really would because at the moment I've got a kind of I can record the drums all separately, no problem. But then I've got to like mute things to be able to uh, to record them singularly, which you know it's not a problem. It just takes a little bit longer. It would be nice if there was a different way to do that. So, yeah, I think that's kind of covered. How long have we been going for now? Oh, 34 minutes. Yeah, I'm, I'm well done. <laughs> uh, ISO for all uh, lets you aggregate audio devices, so that might be it. Yeah, maybe. Well, uh, Warren, you are the man to talk to about that. By the way, if anyone's got any mastering needs or any tips or some, hit Warren up. Um, I, his mastering's top notch. His engineering is top notch. Uh, lovely bloke. And uh, I should be over in his studio possibly... Not next week, possibly the week after. Anyway, yeah, Max are a pain. I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, hmm. and it is the Mac that I am, uh, I am trying to track on at the moment. So I think we've we've kind of covered everything, have we? <laughs>
That is how you jam out of time. Uh, MIDI rules, yes, MIDI indeed rules. Thank you, Daniel. And that <laughs> is how not to be musical. <laughs> I need to learn how the how the the TR8 works and the scatter functions and stuff. I'm a little. I'm not saying I'm a little bit disappointed with the scatter functions. You're going to have to have to have to. Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, it's like a DJ knowing his tunes. You're gonna have to know where the scatter functions are and what they're gonna do and which situations, you know. And it's, it's all about. It's like it's like having a relationship with 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 your synths. It's ridiculous. You've got to find out where sweet spots are and what what it takes to do to to get her off. Anyway, unless anybody has any more questions, I've been going for like 40 minutes now and we still have people watching. Whoop whoop. Anyway, uh, I have been Piero the Acid Clown. We have been talking about the beasts that never sleeps and why you would possibly want three MX1s. It's a no-brainer for me. Like, the, there's not enough inputs on the MX1 and everybody moans about that. If you've got a simple setup, it really does bring everything to get, uh, together nicely. But then when you want something a little bit more, you have to, you, you know, you have to buy three. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a no-brainer. I can have different effects on everything, different auxes on everything, all tailored t to be, you know, a, a help rather than a hindrance. Like, oh shit, that, that uh, combi doesn't work on the synth, but it works really, really well on the drums. So I can't use it on the synth, whereas now I can tailor the combi on the synths to Pudge, please, are you just a toy? Anyway, uh, I'll play with her once once I'm off air. So yeah, that's why I think you should buy a Roland MX-1. I also think you should buy an Electribe. I also think Korg should make a new Electribe. I also think Roland should make a new 909 and call it the 13013 and let me design it. But that's, that's a whole other story. So yeah, here is the TR8. It's a lovely clean sound, lovely, lovely clean sound. I just need to tailor my kicks. A little bit more like that. Anyway, this has been an Acid Clown production. Thank you all very much for joining me this evening. Uh, this should be on YouTube soon, so check out my YouTube channel, pretty please. And, uh, and yeah, we'll see you every Tuesday for the URL. I also run a, 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 a review show. It's called The URL. It stands for Unsigned Review Live. And we go live every Tuesday from one of my pages. It seems better to bounce it around and then it doesn't get stale on, on any pages and then you have to look for it. Anyway, it has been a pleasure playing what I do and what I love uh, better. Oh, what's, what's Warren says? TRA adds a nice clean layer, mate. Yeah, and that sounds way fuller now. Yeah, I to totally agree, Warren. I just have to rein my kicks in a little bit and make them not so distorted. Uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. Um, yeah, I, I may end up processing the, 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 the kick drum, but I'm not sure. I don't know if I want to drag more pedals out with me, you know. It's, you know, dragging this out is a pain anyway. And I've already... Anyway, 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 anyway. Thank you very much for watching. Join us on a Tuesday for the URL where we listen to your tunes and rate your tunes and give you a score or some sort of genuine feedback to help you move along. So, yeah, I am off. I'm going to click stop down here right now. It's been a pleasure. Catch you all later.